Hello everyone. Uh, I know when you're building an engine, everybody's in a hurry. Everybody wants to get it done, get it put in and fire it down the road. But I've learned to take it very slow, methodical, go through every piece of this unit. This 1.6, like anything, is like a chain. The weakest link is going to give and it'll shut it all down. Right now, I was ready to torque down the cylinder head with the camshaft carrier. 75 pounds on each bolt. Do a pattern, like the book says, you torque it down evenly. Now, one thing I noticed that uh, you have inside bolts and you get outside bolts. And what happens is a lot of people, they take a bolt, they just wash it up, clean it back. But I notice there's a lot of grit on these bolts in between the washers uh, there's silicone on them there's grease on the top of the heads and what happens is you put it back in you're swapping out the bolts and this outside bolt here could end up in here and there's grease and this is inside a clean area and it's going to migrate down into the engine over time so these bolts i've sandblasted every bit of it the head bolts need to be super clean i've uh sandblasting them completely. I had one here. I noticed that uh, the threads were rougher and they were irregular shape and this bolt here was getting stretched right in this area already. So you need to check all your bolts. I have inside on the cylinder head I have tapped and cleaned every thread hole. There's 10 holes, 10 bolts. Uh, it's 11 by 1.5 metric. So I'm building an engine to be a durable engine that I can turn key and run it and not have to worry about it for many years. So one thing I've learned was uh, your oil gallery on your camshaft carrier is right here. This is where it comes up from the cylinder head into the cam carrier. Cam carrier obviously is on exposed to the bottom side. There is a gallery right here and it's smaller than the outside hole and that hole that wire there, I don't know if you can see it, but it goes right down, right down into there, to the bottom. And it feeds the center of the camshaft. This hole is only about uh, less than 200 thousandths of an inch, just one over 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, which feeds the center of this camshaft. This one here just happens to be a 79 high output. See the oil comes in through here. And it runs down and it exits here. And it exits here, here, and on the end. And then you have all your your lobes here with a hole. As the main, all your main ones, they go through. And it looks like they got, like this one's got four locations. This one here has one location feed and it feeds out. That hole gets plugged with debris and most likely silicone can plug this, this lobe here and that lobe, if it's plugged, riding on that cam follower and it doesn't have any lubricant on here going up and down, it's going to wear this. So pulling out my smallest machinist drill set, I had to find one that fits the orifice hole. And the one that actually fits was a 63 drill, 0 0.037, 37th of an inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes on your cam lobes, intake and exhaust. Inside here, there is a secondary hole on all of these cam lobes, just to have a small amount of oil feed pouring onto the, and it is actually a 37 thousandths of an inch hole. So you can imagine a little piece of silicone coming and jamming up from the inside of that gallery, trying to force its way out through the hole onto the camp column. Over the years, people have changed these out. Even the 
cam gear, the older ones were split. You might have a split one, you might have a solid one. The solid ones you can actually take off with the threaded, three threaded holds and a puller. People have taken out these engines and shifted them around, repaired them. So parts have been swapped out on these cars over the years.